Is it really bachelor season? Duck season! Rabbit season! <sighs> Hey there, hi there, hello there, Andrew here, and we are now in Bachelor season. If you haven't seen the previous recaps, go ahead and click the link above. So we start the season of The Bachelor with Ben Higgins, a normal guy from a small town in Indiana. Except that he doesn't live there anymore. What? So Ben has a powwow with the former Bachelors of Chris, Sean, and Jason just before he meets the ladies. Two of the three guys that he is talking to didn't end up with the woman that they chose. We then see host Chris Harrison show some clips of the ladies, not all the ladies, that are competing for Ben's love. First, there's Lauren Bushnell, and I'm using her last name because there's like a dozen Laurens. She's a 25-year-old flight attendant, was from California, but now lives in Oregon. Eh. Then there's Kayla, and she has the same job as Ben does as being a software representative, and she's got a strange story. You see, she met her man on a plane. Yeah, hold on, she met a man on a plane. And then two weeks later, she met him in the city that she lives in. It was fate. She watches The Bachelorette that has Caitlyn in it, and she realizes when she sees Ben that he's the one. Yeah, so she dumped her boyfriend to come onto the show. Classy. Then we got Jubilee, not from the X-Men. And she's actually an Afghan war vet. We then have Mandy, who is a dentist from Portland, who is a self-proclaimed weirdo. She didn't have to be self-proclaimed. I would have done it for her. She believes in good oral hygiene, because that is the sign of a good husband. Yes, she is definitely weird. She's like the personification of Gonzo from The Muppets. Then we've got Emily and Haley. If you've ever seen a double mint gum commercial, then yes, you've seen their intro. Moving on. And we've got Amanda, who's a 25-year-old divorcee and a mother of two that has not been on a date since her divorce two years ago. I wonder why. Two kids. Then we have Tierra, who is a chicken enthusiast. Chicken enthusiast? Yeah, she's got pet chickens, and I guess that's not weird. But she does have pictures of the chickens in frames around her house. Some people do that with their pets. Then she's shown with a picture of Ben framed in her living room. Okay, I'm starting to get creeped out now. She's shown with a chicken on her shoulder, and she's brushing her teeth with the chicken. She's also shown wrapping both her hands around kissing the head of a cock. Rooster on TV. Not good. Samantha from Florida. Yeah, Florida represent! She's a law school graduate, and we find out that her dad passed away from ALS when she was a kid, and family is really important. Well, that was a great way of following the chicken lover. Now I'm confused and depressed. The other women don't have intros because we're going into the limo arrivals. And those are great because they can be awkward. I mean, besides chicken lover already. Actually, she's probably more like Gonzo than Mandy. So first in the limo intros is Lauren Bushnell, the flight attendant, which hands him a pair of wings saying something about taking off and the journey together. Meh. Then Kayla, the software rep runs and jumps into Ben's arms. It's a good thing that he caught her because otherwise it would have ended up like a United Healthcare commercial. We got Jennifer who's a 25 year old business owner and meets him and says that Ben and Jen sounds cute. Yeah well I think Ben and Jerry sounds cute but maybe that's because I like ice cream too much. Then we got Jamie a bartender from Canada and she tells Ben that she knows Caitlin from the previous season. Dump her now! And she tells Ben that Caitlin says that he has a really 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 Really, really, really big heart. Well, that was anticlimactic. Sam, the law student, is so excited being there, she questions Ben whether he's got boxers or legal briefs. <laughs> Yeah, Ben is not amused with that question, and neither am I as he says briefs, because now I've got a visual of Ben wearing tidy whiteies. And speaking of tidy whiteies, Jubilee, the war vet, comes out in a tight white dress. She says that she forgot her pickup lines and then makes a joke about not being able to breathe because the dress is too tight. Yes? Or because that Ben smiled at her. Amanda, the mom of two, has a normal introduction and goes into the mansion. And thank you for keeping it normal because somebody has to. Moving on. Lace, a 25-year-old real estate agent, asks Ben to close his eyes. And then when he does, she steals a kiss. Ho, ho, ho! Watch out. In this day and age, that could be called sexual assault. Lauren R., a math teacher, has confessed to Ben that she has been stalking Ben all throughout social media. She then starts to list everything that she knows about him. That's not creepy at all. Oh, and by the way, Ben asked Lauren R for her name three times and she doesn't tell him. What? Then we get Shoshana, who is a 27-year-old mathematician. And I don't think she speaks English. I actually think she might be speaking Russian. Awkward. Leah, who is an event planner, hops out of the limo and pulls up her dress to play some football. She even bends over to hike the ball to Ben. She apparently knew that Ben likes football a lot and wanted him to make a pass at her. Ha ha ha!
Wow. Jojo, a real estate agent, climbs out of the limo with a unicorn mask on. Lauren H. is a teacher that caught a wedding bouquet from the previous week. She then gives Ben the dead flowers as a gesture. Oh, how sweetly depressing. We then see Laura, who is an account executive from Kentucky, who goes by the name of Red Velvet because of her hair. Red Velvet? That sounds familiar. Didn't I see her in the ballroom with the lead pipe? Yeah, I'm definitely calling her Red Velvet. There's too many Lauras and Laurens going on. Mandy, the weirdo dentist from Portland, you remember? Yeah, she shows up with a giant rose on her head. Slightly strange. She does come up with a line that made me laugh, and that was that if things go well, Ben can pollinate her later. <laughs> Next in the limo is the surprise that isn't a surprise because we've seen it in every commercial break. It's Haley and Emily, the Ferguson twins. The identical twins. They get out of the limo and they talk in unison and they say that they've never dated the same guy before because dating twins, that's got to be a good thing, right? Wrong! I've seen plenty of horror movies and I know twins are never a good thing. Megan, who is a 30-year-old cowgirl, shows up with a mini pony named Huey. Uh, okay. Prediction. My little pony's not going to last long. Brienne, who is a nutritional therapist tells Ben that she doesn't eat gluten. Well, good for her. She decides that she wants to break bread with Ben by bashing these breads that she brought on bricks. Who wrote that line? Yeah, I'm sure that sounded a lot better on paper. Izzy, a graphic designer, decides to show up in footy pajamas because she wants to know if, wait for it, Ben is the onesie for her. Or something like that. It's cute, but the women make fun of the way she's dressed. Rachel decides to roll up on a motorized hoverboard. It rolls up! She didn't fall or catch on fire, so I guess that's a good thing. Does that mean she's a well-balanced girl? <laughs> <laughs> These jokes. During all of this time, we get a chance to see the women waiting on the inside. And the only thing that I get out of all of that is that Lace hates everybody and is getting drunk. Jessica, the accountant, arrives and that's about it on her. It's not even worth a pick. Tierra, the chicken lover, shows up and is nervous. Ben mentions to breathe to calm her down. Tierra then says the amazing line, This place looks like Disneyland. It might be the fact that the show is on ABC and ABC happens to be owned by Disney. Just saying. Next is Lauren. Lauren. How many Laurens are there? This is like four or five. Anyway, she's a fashion designer. She goes by LB, and that's what I'm going to call her. Imagine if she leaves here and she dates Tim Debo. Then she'd be called Elbow. Ah! Jackie enters, and she's a generatologist? Basically, it's the study of old people. I feel like I'm getting old watching this show. The cool thing is that she gives Ben a wedding invitation with their name on it, and it says, hashtag, to Higgins and to Hole. That's kind of smooth in a creepy way. Lastly, we have a 23-year-old news anchor by the name of Olivia. A 23-year-old news anchor? How do you become a news anchor at the age of 23? Boobs. You can actually see Ben loses his breath a little bit when he sees her. She could very well be a favorite in this. They compare dimples, and then she enters the house. The limo intros are done, and thankfully because it's been an hour. We then see Ben call his parents on his cell phone, and I don't think that's right because I don't think you're supposed to have a cell phone during the show. Yeah, but he is so small town, and he's got great family values. Thanks for pushing that, ABC. Ben then goes inside to meet the girls, and he says the typical I feel my future wife might be in this room toast. And in the middle of his speech, Weirdo Amanda announces that she's stealing Ben. Because she's a dentist and she wants to look at his mouth, comes the oral exam. And the great thing is that he fails because he needs to floss more. Seriously, we all need to floss more. I use spaghetti to do it. Ben then gets some time with Olivia and she reveals that she quit her job to meet Ben. Apparently Ben is worth unemployment. Oh yeah, maybe being on a Pohunk TV news channel is isn't as good as being on a contest in a major syndicated channel on a major show that garners millions of viewers. Nah, Ben's worth it. So while Ben is chatting with the ladies, the host Chris Harrison meets up with another limo. Who is in that limo? Why, it's more Bachelor alumni. It's Becca Tilly and Amber James. I am going to say that this is the first of many plot twists or plot device that you're going to see on this season. At first I was wondering, is this a little bit like Nick coming back from the last season that dealt with Caitlyn? But I thought to myself, in all fairness, these ladies are showing up on day one. Oh, and by the way, none of the ladies like Becca and Amber. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Becca then crashes Ben's one-on-one -on -one and Ben is shocked to see her. Lace, the real estate agent who has been drinking and drinking and drinking, is spying on Ben from afar and is upset that he is talking to Becca and holding her hand. Why? You kissed him already. Lace is very strange, but she does have the winning line of the night. She actually asks the question in a confessional shot, who would want to 
a virgin. There's around 7 billion people on the planet, so I'm going to say a lot. Oh, by the way, Amber introduced herself as well, and they chat. Lace makes her way outside, who is a little bit tipsy at this point, and asks Ben for a better kiss than the one that they had before. You know, the one that he didn't know was coming. And what's his response? No. <laughs> Ben spends some time with Mandy, and he then goes and finds Lace because he wants her to know that it's all about knowing the women before kissing the women. She took it as a compliment, but it wasn't. Ben then comes on the inside to get the rose and finds Olivia to give her the first impression rose. Apparently, leaving her job was good enough for Ben. Come on, what about Kayla? She left her boyfriend. That's gotta mean something. Olivia comes back inside with the rose, and the mood has changed drastically. I swear I heard things like... <laughs> But I could be wrong. Time for Ben's rose ceremony, and the winners are, in order of Ben's choice, Lauren B, LB, Kayla, Amber, Jamie, Jennifer, Jubilee, Amanda, Jojo, Leah, Rachel, Samantha, Jackie, Haley, Emily, Shoshana, Michael, Tito, Jermaine, Paul, George, John, Ringo, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Lauren H, Becca, Mandy, and the final rose goes to Lace. What? Lace? I'll be honest, she's an attractive lady, but that's just skin deep. Everything else? No. She's shallow, like paper thin. I can see right through her. I guess that's why she's called Lace. So the women that don't have any roses say goodbye. Wait a minute, that means Chicken Lover's gone and so's My Little Pony. So is Gluten Girl and Onesie Up the Competition and Red Velvet, Deep Breath Jessica and Social Stalker. What am I gonna be able to talk about? Ben then begins to give his speech and Lace interrupts him and says she needs to talk to him in private. Is this like the new Sean this season? She begins to argue with Ben. Argue with Ben? Because she's upset that she got the last rose. The last? Be happy you got one! She is also upset that Ben didn't make any eye contact with her during the rose ceremony. Ben tries to rationalize with her because, you know, rationalizing with a drunk always works. And he tells her that he wants her to stay but then tells the confessional that apparently the drama is just getting started. Yeah, you think so? You're dating 21 women at the same time. And two of them are identical twin sisters. Like, that's not going to be an issue later on. Though I will say this, if the twins last long enough, they could very well make Bachelorette history and become the Bachelorette both of them. We'll see how far they get. So do you have any favorites so far? Who do you think is going to make it till the end? Don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it, plus subscribe so you get notified the moment I upload. And I will see you in the next video.